So now I'll read today's、um, passage. Today's passage is Acts 16 19 through 34. I will be reading the English version NIV pr-、um, printed in your bulletin. When her owners realized that their hope of making un- money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When they received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a very violent earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he fell on, he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Please allow me to pray. Dear Lord, we will now have an opportunity to hear a word from you, so please adjust our hearts so we will be able to accept it. Please watch over, uh, over um, uh, Pastor Osumi as he gives the message. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Yesterday, it was kind of a strong storm, but were you all okay? And there was、uh, trouble with the traffic. And so, sometimes there are cases where、um, air, airplanes also have a delayed、uh, takeoff、um, due to、uh, weather conditions. And I myself have experienced this as well. There was once a time、uh, when an airplane、uh, took off a little late. And so when the, they finally, t-、uh, finally took off, the pilot told the、um, passengers this. He said, You know, I apologize for the late delay in our departure. And in, as a sign of our uh, 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 you know,、uh, forgiveness of, of this, we will give you everyone a free drink. And so the stewardesses you know, came to each seat asking the people what drink they would like for you know, free drink service. And at one seat,、um, a man said, I would like a gin and tonic. And so he, t- he took that. And the, the next person was asked by the stewardess what,、uh, what they wanted. And, and that person was、um, uh, re- explained like this He said,、um, I, uh, if, if I think it would be better if I、um, had an affair instead of drinking an alcoholic、um, beverage. And this is because he was a pastor. And so he、um, you know, didn't want to take the alcoholic、um, beverage. So the person who had the gin and tonic, who was sitting next to him, gave the gin and tonic back to the stewardess. And he said to the stewards, so he said, I didn't know he had a choice of whether to have an affair or、um, have an alcoholic drink. So I, I'd like to have an affair instead of having the alcoholic drink.、Um, of course, this isn't what the、um, stewardess was implying, and neither was the pastor, but、um, this is what this person misunderstood. In our life,、um, every person has a lot of、uh, opportunities to, make,、uh, chances, uh, to take chances and decide things every day. And so,、um, in our daily lives, we make many choices and、uh, we have to make decisions about many things.、Um, recently, I have read a book by Kazuko Watanabe, 
and happiness, and、uh, happiness is decided by your heart. And it's、um, you know in theory that、uh, you decide if you're happy. And the Bible also says the same thing.、Um, for example,、uh, I see I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Deuteronomy eleven twenty six. This was a, a passage of Moses. And and God, it's not to say that God says some people would be blessed in their life and some people would be cursed. That's not what He's saying. It's what He's.、Um, it's not saying that、um, you know He's decided ahead of time you know who's going to be blessed or cursed, but rather that、um, God has given each person the、um, opportunity or the chance the. A gift of being able to choose, and based on the choices we make, we will either be blessed or cursed. And so God gives us the ability to choose. And Joshua twenty four fifteen says, "Then choose for yourselves this day who you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord." So, in other words,、um, this means that you and your,、uh, you know, that he said, "Me and my household will serve the Lord," and whether other people do so or not, that choice is up to them. And、uh, Solomon also said in Proverbs eighteen twenty one, "The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit." So, if this means you can choose what、uh, you、uh, prefer, and by choosing, then you can、uh, that chooses whether you choose death or life. And also, Solomon said in Proverbs three thirteen one two, a wise son、uh, heeds his father's instruction.、Uh, sorry,、uh, last one. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So, in other words,、um, the choice is in your mouth. Your mouth is where、uh, you choose what you will do, and you choose what you will say. And、uh, based on that, then you will take action. And based on the action, that will determine what happens. And so today,、um, the topic is "Lift Up a Voice of Joy." The sermon title is "Lift Up a Voice of Joy." So. Um, we will talk about how、uh, to express joy and what the meaning of it as well. In the Bible, it says、uh, more than eight hundred times God、uh, tells us we are told to be、uh, to rejoice. In my my Bible has about twenty two thousand pages in it, so this means about every two or three pages it says rejoice. So it's rejoice, rejoice, rejoice every two or three pages. So of course, you know this isn't、um, you know always you know that case, but it, it, that's just how common that the command of rejoicing is included in the Bible. To two or three every in other words every two or three pages. God is. Are we being told to rejoice? Paul、um, said a famous thing. He,、um, he said, "Rejoice always." And the reason is that in Jesus Christ,、um, we, we、uh, that is that is、uh, God's will for us through Jesus Christ. And to be happy isn't just、uh, to feel good. It's to have to have God's、um, heart in our hearts, and to have an understanding of that, and to have the goal of having that in our hearts as well. In another place, in、uh, Philippians four four, and、uh, Paul says, "Rejoice in the Lord always." I will say it again, rejoice. It's the same thing he repeats two times on on, on purpose. Jesus said,、uh, when Jesus said something、uh, something very important, he said, "Surely, surely,"、um, or surely, or surely, surely,、um, to、uh, er- verify how important it was、um, of what he was about to say. And so that would、uh, clue the listeners in as to what would be important and、uh, how they should、um, uh, listen very、uh, carefully to what he was going to say. So, to be、um, so for Paul to say, "Rejoice in the Lord," I will say it again, "Rejoice," really reflects how important this is and how、uh, we need to put this into our lives. To you know, to say I will again, to say I will, I know I say it again is very important. However,、um, just how you know pr- how、uh, probable is it for somebody to be、uh, you know rejoice always? So, is this actually possible to do? You know, in reality, 
In today's passage, um, Paul and Silas were in a, a jail cell in a prison, and they were in a terrible, you know, awful situation. However, they they were rejoicing and were singing to God praises and hymns, and being happy regardless of their situation. And this doesn't mean that um, they were in a bad situation because they were, but in, even in that situation, they decided to be um, uh, happy to God and to rejoice to Him as well. And of course, um, they were happy because of this, uh, but uh, in order to be uh, rejoice always, you have to understand the true meaning of what rejoice means. In the Bible, um, there are many different translations of it. Um, this is one uh, Japanese translation here that I have in my hand, but um, and it's uh, made by the uh, Japanese um, Bible um, uh, Committee. Um, but there are many, many different other translations in Japanese as well as various la other languages. And so, of course, that's uh, good. But um, sometimes there are different translations um, uh, depending on the version of the Bible. So, for example, if you look at uh, a Nehemia verse, um, in my Bible, it says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. So, in other words, um, you know, God is uh, becomes happy um, because of our uh, joy. However, another uh, version says, uh, your power is to rejoice in the Lord. So, in other words, you uh, oh, you are happy, and and in the other version, it's that God will be happy. And then, um, another version is, rejoicing in the Lord itself is the source of your strength. So, um, this is kind of more uh, close to the first um, version I um, mentioned. In the King's um, version, King James version um, is actually probably the closest uh, version <laughs> is um, closest to the real meaning. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Um, so um, this uh, translation is also another possibility. Um, however, you can uh, this kind of has a different implication. So you kind of wonder, well, which is the true translation? Um, but if you look at it overall, then you can kind of understand uh, what it really is. In Japanese, um, there are many kanji characters, and they um, ha some express the same meaning. So um, there's, uh, for example, on the left side, we usually use uh, this um, character to express the word um, rejoice. Um, and so this is the far left one. And the next one is a different kanji, also with the same reading as rejoice and uh, same meaning. And the next one as well. And so these three on the left side are more of a time of uh, feeling that someone would experience and uh, how that um, they would be used to express a person's feeling of joy rejoicing. To feel happy, to um, feel uh, joy from your heart is uh, more of a, a translation of it. However, the fourth uh, kanji on the far right is uh, also has the same reading in Japanese and meaning, but it um, kind of has a different meaning in that um, it's more of like a way of uh, expressing gratitude or appreciation for something. So this would not be a correct uh, Japanese character to use in this case. Um, because it's not uh, more of a feeling, it's more of a like obligation to be thankful for something, something to express uh, thanks or uh, gratitude for something that has been done for you. So it's more of like oh, your will rather than your feeling. And that's uh, the meaning this uh, fourth uh, kan kanji on the far right has. So in some dictionaries, it um, has a uh, Japanese word, omedito, uh, congratulations, and it uses this kanji. Um, this would be used for like the New Year greeting. This is not um, for a, a person's feeling, uh, perhaps, uh, but rather than a greeting. So in other words, uh, your, um, to express your um, feelings, and your thoughts and your gratitude um, you, is the um, meaning of uh, rejoice overall. What um, probably what the Bible is expressing is uh, the kanji closest to the right. Um, f humans' feelings change uh, depending on the situations and uh, change um, 
quite frequently. Um, so, uh, like for example, long ago, you may have been driving a car and been very happy and um, pushing, uh, press the button to turn on the, um, um, uh, listen to the radio, but it was a very um, sad um, type of radio program, then all of a sudden you, will, you won't be happy in ASML. Um, you'll be very sad, and you might remember something sad that happened in your past. Um, and so, you know, uh, um, perhaps, you know, if the, so the sky changes from uh, sunny to rainy, then you might become, ch your feelings might change as well. So feelings can change very quickly. Um, and also, based on the situation or your circumstances, uh, feelings can change as well. So um, it's, it's kind of like that we have a thermometer, uh, to, and as the thermometer goes up and down depending on the um, situation or the climate. In the same way, our um, feelings change and go up and down um, based upon how we're feeling at that very moment. However, in the Bible, the Bible biblical um, under meaning of rejoice is not uh, like a thermometer you would use for your body, where it could go up and down all the time, or, or sorry, uh, for the, the climate, <laughs> but it would be used for one used for your um, body. Um, you know, you, you know. Of course, it changes to some degree, but it doesn't uh, go, you know, dramatically up or dramatically down. Um, it it is uh, pretty much uh, stable to a certain de degree. And a human body temperature is pretty much set. Um, it, um, so this is, uh, it's more of like a set um, type of reading. So in other words, um, God is not uh, changed. And in, in the same way, he doesn't want us to change our, um, our, uh, feeling, of our feeling of rejoicing. And to... Um, express uh, gratitude and thanks is something that we should do um, regardless of our situation. And so this is something that Paul understood. And he, he you know, um, freed a woman of uh, evil spirits, but um, the people who uh, realized that their money would be gone, oh, was now gone, that um, Paul had uh, gotten rid of the uh, evil spirits, um, p you know, threw Paul and Silas into um, prison and beat him and uh, left him there and, um, you know, threw him into the back of the prison. However, they n knew that even though their situation was very bad, um, it's not that they didn't feel anything. I mean, they were human, so of course they were sad. Of course they were, you know, in pain. And of course they were very, you know, probably angry or upset about this. Um, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't just deny that they wouldn't have, could, could have been, you know, happy about the position they were in. Um, however, um, even with feeling this, um, it's very likely that because of what the what is written in the Bible, that they chose to be happy and they chose to rejoice and they chose to take God's word uh, as the truth and uh, decided to sing out to God uh, in response and uh, take action. Paul says, um, rejoice in the Lord always, and it says, in the Lord. And so what does it mean to rejoice in the Lord? Um, so many um, Christians I know, often say this phrase in the Lord. Um, so, so you wonder, you know, where, how are you going into the Lord? Um, what it means is that um, as God is watching us, as God is looking at us, we should um, see things in the same way as God does, and we should have the same eyes and the same heart as God. And so that's what it means to be in God, to have the same perspective as He does. So, you know, if, um, you know, Paul and Silas were in this type of situation, of course, it would be very harsh. But they, um, cho instead of wondering, you know, why this had happened to them and, you know, being upset over it, um, they uh, chose to rejoice instead. And uh, up until now, um, they were free you know, outside of uh, prison and could, you know, eat what they wanted and were not in, uh, had have handcuffs on. 
and um, that was, um, you know, their original state. But now they were in a very difficult and painful uh, situation and a very harsh circumstances. And so thinking of themselves as how they, sh how it shouldn't be, um, and and not rejoicing because of that, it would be the natural thing. But that would not reflect. Um, uh, that they are not in uh, the Lord, but uh, that would that would mean that they're just um, uh, responding to how the world is uh, um, providing circumstances for them. However, Jesus said, you know, to look, see yourself as being in Christ or being in God, and um, regardless of your situation or circumstances. Um, you are to realize that God loves you very deeply and that um, God is watching over you closely. So you are all, uh, we are all uh, child, children of the king and we all have the rights to um, you know, God's kingdom and we are all loved by God and we have a special um, uh, existence because of this. And so seeing the circumstance in this way and from that standpoint is how they uh, reacted. And that's what it means for us to do the same thing as well. This isn't just um, for uh, ourselves, but others as well. And even how you think, even how fair you think um, wor the world may be fair, th this world is not fair in many ways. So in the society, you know, you can, um, they try to make it so that, you know, things are pretty much fair to all people, but it's not fair to everyone. So there are some people who never get sick and finally die, and there are people who just get sick all the time and finally die. There's some people who work really hard in life and some who don't. And there are also some people who die early and some people who live a long life. And uh, there are some people, there's some uh, children who even die in their mother's um, stomachs. So there is very much uh, un unfairness in a sense in this world. And so in this very unfair situation, it's very difficult to understand circumstances. And so if you just base your perspective on the world around you, it will be very confusing. However, if you base your um, perspective and, your, and you see your circumstances through God, in God, um, that will completely change things. You realize that um, even though you can't see God, He is here and He is uh, watching over each of us. And, and you realize that He is the one and only God, then that will completely change your perspective. And then you will realize that he will have a very fair uh, judgment of everyone at the end of the world. And uh, after you, and you have to realize when you die, you will go to the uh, onto eternity. And you realize that um, you will receive everything that you didn't receive in this uh, lifetime. And so that overall, um, everything will be fair and that God is not an unfair God. And so uh, you realize that this is your plan for uh, your life. And if you see things in this perspective and um, realize how short your time is here on life, uh, you won't get so uh, caught up on small things and unfair things in life, um, but be able to um, you know, uh, rejoice in the Lord. And you realize that, you know, what's going to happen in the future, then you can see the world through God's eyes and you can, and it won't be so difficult to rejoice. So you'll be able to see things that you can't see in a sense now. So can you see right now uh, God's uh, presence here? <laughs> if you... Um, try to see from your own perspective um, this world has a lot of uh, difficult uh, difficult aspects to it and uh, unfair things but if you look in uh, God's eyes this world is really bright and has a lot of po possibilities and potential in this um, church there was a man uh, a number of years ago who gave a testimony and he and he's he said that uh, um, everything was bright and shiny the next day after he be believed in very shiny and trying to um, 
and of course, you know, glass um, and, and saying that like even flowers too would be uh, shiny. Um, so what, what he was inferring to is that the world itself doesn't change, but our perspective and how we see things does change. And um, this will change if we have faith in Christ. So in, if you choose to rejoice in the Lord, then your um, perspective on the, lo- the world will change and you will uh, realize uh, you know, how wonderful the world is and how much potential it has. Um, as a result, you will change and um, it's not because you decided to change, it's because God um, has uh, given his um, grace and uh, joy to us. And, you know, I just explained in Nehemiah there were many different uh, translations. But what I'm trying to say is that in Christ and to rejoice in, uh, sorry, rejoice in the Lord and to um, express gratitude is your choice and your, your power and your decision to make. And in heaven... And God is, you know, probably saying, oh, it's so great to see finally, (laughs) you finally rejoiced. You know, in the Bible, I said 800 times to rejoice and finally they get it. Finally, that person is, you know, you know, rejoicing. So, you know, obviously Jesus Christ is very uh, happy and running around in heaven probably. And that uh, rejoicing in heaven will come down to earth and come inside of us and allow us to feel um, rejoicing from the inside out. Um, so it's the gratitude and joy just abounding from inside of you. So this is um, truly uh, what, you know, if we uh, rejoice, then God will rejoice, and then that comes back down to us, and, and that way we can rejoice in him always. So the result is to rejoicing in Lord will give us power. So it's kind of a circulatory system in this way, uh, spiritual realm, of course. And so if you choose to rejoice, um, then God will rejoice and return back to you. And so it just keeps um, making a spiral, um, eternally spiral uh, you know, at movement. But of course, the opposite is true. Uh, if you don't uh, rejoice and you just uh, keep you know, complaining and whining about things and just get, you know, you know, feel things are terrible, then unfortunately that will um, be the direction that you will head in. This is um, only you. you, This basically the the only difference between these two scenarios is whether you choose to rejoice or not. And and because of your choice, your life will change 180 degrees. In the uh, um, when um, Paul and Silas were in jail. they uh, couldn't have their joy taken away from them because their joy was coming from God. And so they had a a lot of joy and rejoicing in the prison. And in the middle of the night, they were praying and they were singing to God, and there was a huge earthquake. And due to the earthquake, all of the prison doors came open and the chains came off of the prisoners. Of course, this is a miracle. And that God's, um, you know, power coming down, you know, obviously probably made God happy in heaven as well. And then another miracle occurred. And this was that the um, prison guard, uh, sorry, none of the prisoners uh, ran away when the prison doors were open. Why? Um, The reason is that the um, prisoners were listening to the voices of uh, Paul and Silas and uh, their hymns to God. And there's a reason for this. Paul and Silas um, were, uh, isn't because they were so, you know, uh, good at singing? Um, Probably not. (laughs) It's that uh, something in the songs um, encouraged them. And they probably uh, felt the fear of God. In the Bible, it says that Israel's uh, pri- uh, it speaks of the um, so- uh, songs in Israel, and that God is alive in the songs. And it's possible that God was speaking to these prisoners through the songs that Paul and Silas were singing.
So in these songs, um, it's possible that the Holy Spirit came upon these prisoners and worked in their hearts at that time and uh, made them realize that they had done something wrong and that's why they were in prison. And so even though they had the choice to, you know, finally run away from prison, they realized they had to stay and um, take responsibility. So they realized they um, probably had to stay there and this would be a miracle. The Holy Spirit uh, opened their hearts and it wasn't just the prisoners' hearts that were opened, it was also the prison guard. Um, the prison guard assumed that all the prisoners had run away, but he was stopped by Paul and Silas's words, and he asked them, what, do, what must I do to be saved? And uh, this is an amazing, this is amazing uh, event that somebody would just, um, you know, ask, what do I need to be do saved instead of us, you know, people trying to um, convince other people to um, be saved. Um, but in this case, um, the prison guard was asking, you know, what do I need to be saved? And Paul said, you believe. And so at that time, uh, the prison guard believed, and he and his family were um, ba saved and baptized. And uh, it says that the Lord was pleased because of this. This was a miracle. So this uh, shows that rejoicing to God and uh, give, it shows um, gets up to God, and then God uh, bounces that back down to the earth. So the choice to be happy and rejoice changes um, the circumstances around you. There's a book, uh, The Response of um, Praise, um, by Mer Mer Merlin Carothos. And it says the choice to um, rejoice. Um, uh, many people wrote uh, testimony letters. And so a book was written uh, based on this. And it has many testimonies in it. And I would like to show, um, ex explain uh, to you one of the testimonies. In one, um, there was one family where there was a family, the father was an alcoholic and very abusive, and um, the family um, had to put up with their father, the father's uh, abusiveness every day, and, and the mother um, was um, um, always beaten by her husband, and the husband would take out his belt and use the belts to swing swing around and chase after those children and hit the children with his belt. And so this um, lifestyle uh, uh, was terrible and it continued for 30 years. The, cr the mother was uh, became Christian and she prayed with her children um, with her prayed with the children that her, their husband would um, be saved. But even after praying many years, um, this situation just became worse and uh, didn't get better at all. Um, the husband's uh, uh, situation just became worse and was very abusive and kept being uh, drinking. However, the one mother and his um, mother and her children um, said through this book, uh, reading a book, that uh, there was a thing such as choosing to rejoice, and so she thought, well, it was worth and trying. So she and her children decided, even though they were in a terrible situation, they would choose to rejoice, and. They um, decided, so they made that choice, and they uh, decided to pray in that way. So um, the first evening when they decided to do this, the um, father came back um, early, and he hadn't drank anything that day, which is the first time in years. And when they asked him, he said that when he was coming home, um, there was something like a hand that came on my head and pushed me down, and I, I fell down, and I was uh, very scared. And this hand on my head just pushed me down. And um, it felt like it was saying to me that I was being told to pray. And so I b became very small and prayed um, for help. And before me, um, I was able to see in my life all the things that I had done so far, all the terrible things I had done. And, you know, when I was beating them, my children, and when I was, um, you know, being abusive to my wife, and when I was fighting. All of the 
terrible things I'd done in my life, um, I saw and I just, I just became sick and I wanted it to stop. And I, and I, I, I repented to God and, um, uh, surprisingly my, um, li- my feeling became very light and I felt loved and I felt happiness. And now I'm back here at home. So um, from that day, um, that man stopped drinking alcohol together, and he believed in Jesus Christ. And he and his wife and his uh, children went to church. And still today, he um, uh, feels that now every day is like uh, living in heaven, even though he's still here. Um, up until now, they've been living in hell, in a sense. Um, so this is the reason why this changed is the decision to rejoice. Um, so I just want to clarify that this doesn't mean that by rejoicing that tomorrow everything will change in your life. Um, that's not what this is saying. This um, it doesn't mean that your circumstances will automatically change either. What it does mean is that, um, you know, it, it actually in some cases it, your circumstances might not change, but something will change for sure, and that is your heart. Your heart will change. And that will definitely change. And if your heart changes, the way you say things will change. And if you way you change the way you say things you change, then that changes your actions and changes the things you say and may change in uh, in a in a after a while that will that could possibly change your circumstances. And so um, that's what it means. So it means that in your heart, um, uh, the joy in your heart can be like waves and inflect other people. Um, in this church, there's a group called Kira Kira, and this means and joy, um, joy and praise, and are the kanji used for this. And last year, I was asked to help with this, uh, but I wasn't really interested. It was kind of sounded like uh, had a different meaning to it. Um, but um, I was ex- I was told to participate, so I did, and it wasn't just singing um, song, s- songs from a song b- hymn book, but other songs, and and uh, so it kind of meant that joy will come. So, uh, <laughs> so this kila kila in English would mean you know the joy will come, joy will come. So if we uh, if we choose to rejoice, then the joy will come back to us as well. So if you wonder why some people always seem happy, and, and why you are maybe not, is perhaps that um, you are not joyful from from what you have, and that's why uh, you are not happy. So. Unless you make the decision to um, rejoice, then you won't be able to receive any of this um, joy yourself. So, the places where there are there is joy, then more joy will come. In one church, um, when they have a meeting, um, one of the one one of uh, each each um, person on the committee is supposed to say a joke of some sort, and the reason uh, for this is that the pastor believed that in the committee, um, people have to understand the importance and happiness of what it means to rejoice and be happy, and so um, this is one way it's to um, have. Uh, you know, laughter and joy put into it so that um, that uh, it will happen. And so if you're really happy, then you will receive more joy in, from other directions in your life. Um, this is kind of unrelated, but if you watch the news, news usually starts off with terrible accidents and tragedies. And if you listen to it, it's like 90% of it's pretty bad. <laughs> but if you listen to the very end, about the 10th subject, they usually mention something good. So what do you think about the 10 p.m. news? Um, they usually don't um, bring up positive things. They just usually um, tell bad things. And so you feel uh, very sad and listening to the news. But if the news only told good things and exciting things and exciting things, 
I think that um, there are more, more people who decide to watch the news because they want to be that way and they want to feel that way and they want to have the encouragement. So this um, is kind of some kind of uh, faith um, that you are assured that God will provide what you uh, are desiring, as Jesus mentioned. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have received it and it will be yours. Um, there's a man by the name of Hirotaro Hikuchi. He was the previous uh, president of the Asahi building. He has already passed away. But when he um, was uh, when he prayed, he um, said he never asked God for anything. Instead, he um, believed God's promise, and he always praised God, thanking, thanking for things that he hoped would come true. So it wasn't like he was um, praying in an invoice state, but rather a receipt say source, uh, saying thank you for um, what God had given him, even though he hadn't received it yet. And so there was one time when this um, his company was hanging on by a thread in an extremely precarious position, and... So when he was trying to help the company get back on its estate, um, he, there were um, three people that came to help um, with the situation, but it just became worse. And he was the fourth person to help with the situation. And um, however, he didn't give up on this terrible situation. And he, um, he knew that when he was 60 years old, he would not be going back to his original job, and so he decided to do the best he could. The result was that he did this type of prayer. He said to God, um, um, I feel like I'm on my own, but he didn't ask God. He didn't want um, the company to just disappear. No. How he did pray was that he said, thank you, Lord. Um, thank you. We have one share now. And thank you. Oh, sorry, that we have become top in shares. We have uh, new employees back, and we have our um, customers back. And thank you so much for improving our situation. And so he was praying to God in advance for what he hoped would happen. And in actuality, a number of years later, they did come back and became placed first in stocks. And so for, y for you here today as well, um, you know, obviously there are times when uh, you, things aren't going as what you would like, but I, you know, I suggest that you um, rejoice and uh, change your heart and how you're feeling and that in that way you can accept joy coming back to your life and uh, you, will feel ex you will feel God's joy in your life and that will come out uh, from inside of you. Today's title of the message was Lift Up a Voice of Joy. So I'm looking at you now and seeing about half of you are <laughs> still making a decision of whether you will or not. But I would like you to make a decision before you leave here today that this week you will make the choice to rejoice. This is something that anyone can do, anyone, because anyone can make a choice. It's not a feeling. It's based on what you choose to do in your life. And if you choose, then you will choose that choice, you will change your uh, your surroundings will change and maybe your circumstance will change. So um, I pray for your, um, I make this decision. We're, uh, we are told to always uh, rejoice in the Lord and as Paul says it again, rejoice. And this is a very important thing. However, we are uh, very susceptible to our feelings and we easily become disappointed and upset and make poor decisions. However, we realize we have the choice and we can choose to uh, rejoice in the Lord and express gratitude and joy. So please strengthen us, Lord, and give us the ability to do this. And allow us um, to be uh, rejoicing even regardless of our circumstances in this coming week. Let us use this um, word from you, Lord, to uh, work in our lives so that um, in the coming week our uh, situation will change because we have changed and uh, look to you for uh, rejoicing. And we believe in your word, Lord, and that uh, we can stand on it. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please have a moment of prayer in silence now. <laughs> 